this is Father John Hughes. Um, as you will be aware, at least with this first video recording that I'm doing, you're going to be able to tell that there is not a very good synchronization, synchronization, excuse me, between the video and the audio. I just want to let you know that we are working on that technical problem, and hopefully by the next video we will have that. Uh, under control a little bit better. But until that time, I want to offer you my apologies for the lack of synchronization between the audio and the video. Sorry, we're doing the best we can. God bless. Hello, my name is Father John Hughes with the Canons Regular of the Holy Cross. And as you are aware, we, uh, we have been putting out some short videos for the sake of uh, helping the OA members develop their spiritual lives in this current situation that we are all undergoing, this uh, stay-at-home order, we, we all have some extra time. And so we're trying to put together some, some small helps uh, to assist you in, in developing your spiritual life. And one of the things that I want to work on uh, is a little small project that I'd like to call Bible Hints. And basically what I want to do is I want to give some hints in improving our Lexio Divina. What I want to do is give five short talks that will cover the four main themes of the sacred scripture. And what those four main themes are, are of course creation, uh, Abraham as a father of faith, the Exodus, and then the Davidic kingdom. These four Old Testament themes are a major part of the fundamental story of sacred scripture. And when we, so when we recognize this, when we know this, we don't really have to be Bible scholars because when we know this, these facts, we can make connections when we read sacred scripture, when we read the old books of the Old Testament, when we read the New Testament, we can make connections with these major themes that will help us to enter more deeply into the mystery of Christ, into the mystery of scripture. So the first of these five talks, which is the one that I'm giving now, is uh, called Covenant Made in Creation. The second talk will be about Abraham, the father of the faith. The third talk will be Exodus and New Exodus. The fourth talk will be about the Davidic kingdom. Uh, it'll be, uh, uh, let's see, uh, the Davidic kingdom, a liturgical kingdom. And then the fifth talk will be about uh, the temple and, and uh, temple typology. So this talk is about uh, the covenant made in creation. And this is a really, really powerful theme because in order to enter more deeply into sacred scripture, to gain a better understanding of Jesus, to enter more deeply into the mystery of Jesus, we need to recognize that it's one single story. And this unified story is linked together by the covenant. It's the covenants that God made with his people throughout salvation history that, that make the unifying line of this beautiful story of salvation history. And so that's what we want to start off with here. And so for many of us, the question might be, well, what does a covenant have to do with creation? What does a covenant have to do with the book of Genesis? Um, what we can discover is that actually uh, the account of creation was written in what we could say a covenantal form. And... We know that, okay, God created the world in six days, and then on the seventh day, he rested. Okay? On the sixth day, God created man and woman as the crown of creation. 
and then on the seventh day he rested and he he blessed and hallowed creation now i want to read from genesis chapter 2 verse 1 and following verse 1 through 3 uh, to to use as our starting point where well, it says thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them and on the seventh day god finished his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done so god blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it god rested from all his work which he had done in creation now this word for hallowing creation in hebrew is kiddoshim and what kiddoshim means it means hallowing but it's also a word for uh, marriage so basically uh, one of the uh, jewish rabbis said that the the sabbath the seventh day of the week was a bride and god married the bride this bride the sabbath but he didn't just marry this day what the sabbath represented was the finishing up of creation and the crown of that creation was man and woman and so god married creation god married man and woman in the very first covenant that was built in to creation and this is something that's very beautiful and so once again, when we recognize this, when we are aware of this, you know, we don't have to be biblical scholars. We can always use this information to make connections with other stories in Scripture uh, to enter more deeply into Scripture. Now, aside from the word for hallowing, that means to marry, uh, how else do we know that that uh, the covenant was built into creation well we know that because of the fact that it was done in seven days we learn from Genesis chapter 21 verses 28 through 32 or 33 that Abraham entered into a covenant with Abimelech the Philistine and I want to read that very quickly for you it says that Abraham set seven new lambs of the flock apart. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven new lambs which you have set apart? He said, These seven new lambs you will take from my hand, that you may be a witness for me, that I dug this well. Therefore, that place was called Be'er Sheba, because there both of them swore an oath. So they made a covenant at Be'er Sheba. So Abraham and Abimelech made this covenant. They swore an oath. They made a covenant. Now, uh, of course, the word oath, the word covenant, they are interchangeable words for the Hebrew people. So you could say you oathed yourself to another person or you covenanted yourself to another person. They're interchangeable all the time. In the way that one said that in Hebrew was that they sevened themselves. They sevened themselves. That's how they swore an oath. That's how they entered into a covenant. And so that number seven then, which is built into creation, is God's way of telling us that he is covenanting himself to mankind through very, the very act of creation. Uh, the universe, the world is the place where man is to live out this covenantal, marital uh, covenant with God. So what we see then is that the covenant is a way to form a family. In this particular covenant, in the very uh, dawn of creation, God formed a family bond with Adam and Eve through what was actually a, a marital covenant, the most intimate of all covenants. And so from the very beginning, God wanted man as his spouse, as a part of his family. And so this fact that God wanted 
man, male and female, to be his spouse, to be a part of his family, has enormous consequences for the rest of Scripture. There are, it forms incredible links, typological links with the rest of Scripture. As an example, uh, uh, the head of a household, okay, the head of a family. Well, we often refer to the head of the family, his last name as the house of so-and-so. Uh, we, for instance, all throughout European Christendom, the great kingdoms, the great dynasties, you know, like the Plantagenet dynasty of England, the Habsburg dynasty of Austria, all of these great kingdoms, you know, the, the house of Tudor, the house of Rose, various, the various uh, uh, houses, okay, uh, the family was the house, and this is the way it is with God. The family of God is the house of God. And what is the house of God? Well, the house of God is the temple. The temple is the house of God. And so you see this link then before, between the family of God and the temple of God, the house of God. And what makes a temple a temple? Uh, of course, we learn from the Old Testament that the temple is made up. It has the spirit. The Shekinah was a part of the temple. The presence of God was there. What else was there? Well, the priests lived in the temple while they were performing their sacred sacerdotal duties. So you had a priesthood in the temple. You had the presence of God in the temple. You had the sacrifices in the temple. Uh, for instance, the Solomonic temple had the, um, the, the Toda sacrifices, which interestingly enough were uh, made up of a bloody sacrifice and an unbloody sacrifice. The bloody sacrifice was that of the lamb being killed, and the unbloody sacrifice was that of the offering of bread and wine. And this was done every day at 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. This, this sacrifice, this unbloody sacrifice, and this, or this bloody sacrifice, and this unbloody sacrifice, this was done in the temple. So you've got the presence of God, you've got the priesthood, you've got these sacrifices, the total sacrifices, which of course is Hebrew for Eucharist. So you've got all of these going on in the house of God, in the family of God. And of course, it doesn't take much to see the allusions to the New Testament with the Holy Eucharist, with the Mass, with Jesus as the true Lamb of God. All of this then is present in, and you could say, you know, seedling form already in the book of Genesis, just by recognizing these typological links of, you know, the family of God, the house of God, the temple of God. And so this is a beautiful way how the creation account is the start of this beautiful, rich story of God's love affair with man, of his inviting man into this beautiful covenantal relationship, this familial relationship with himself, this marital relationship with himself. And so uh, that's about it for this first talk. We will end here. Uh, and then hopefully I'll be able to get some other talks out in uh, the not too distant future. I thank you for your time and attention and God bless you.